for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one way that uh, consumers uh, access uh, fintech is through their smartphone. Um, yet for many individuals in, in rural areas, that's not a very reliable service. Um, in West Virginia, the, the, tr the mountainous terrain is, limits that ability for people to have access. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious as to how the fintech companies are, are addressing the needs of rural communities, rural areas, as compared to those in more urban settings. Is there something that you're focusing on or you would recommend we look towards for addressing rural areas as compared to the urban centers? Don't all speak at once. So I'll, I'll take a stab at that. I mean, Thank you. I, I said that, you know, FinTech is necessary but not sufficient. And there are a set of infrastructure issues that clearly need to be addressed, um, not just in the mountainous regions, but in any rural area. And we should also add, even in urban areas, um, you know, Wi-Fi is not necessarily ubiquitous or um, cost-free. And so for many low-income households, um, accessing uh, data plans is, is a, a really tough pull on their budgets. So there, in addition to sort of thinking through some of the issues that you've heard today, this is really a whole cloth because you're exactly right. There needs to be some sort of infrastructure program in place to be able to provide access to reliable, high quality um, broadband services, whether that is um, a wired line, uh, a fiber optic line, or a, a Wi-Fi. Thank you. Um, because I think far too often in this country, we, we focus on our urban centers and our rural communities across this country are, are shortchanged uh, on access and other, other opportunities, whether it's health care, roads, water, sewer, I could go on with it. So I'm hoping that through these services, how, how helpful these can be with our smartphone, we're still limiting a certain number of people. Uh, Mr. Asade, uh, in your testimony, you mentioned that uh, how many Americans are underserved by existing products and services to help them with their finances. Uh, but there's also been a discussion about the attention between bringing new innovations to market quickly and making sure consumers uh, are protected uh, because this is their financial health. Uh, so how has your firm attempted to address this tension and make sure that the consumers are getting safe, secure, and innovative products? So one, one comment on your previous question, I sense that the digital divide actually knows no, uh, the issues you're facing in West Virginia are not dissimilar to what you see in the South Bronx, even though it's heavily populated, um, heavily populated um, areas, the digital divide actually affects uh, underserved communities in different ways. So there's some threads across what you're seeing in the mountains of West Virginia with what you see in the canyons across the East River. Um, when we look at businesses to invest in, um, we, uh, we don't believe that regulatory arbitrage is a business model. And in fact, uh, a couple of the principals, myself included, actually uh, served in, uh, in, the, in the federal government and the executive branch as actual regulators. So we are very cognizant of the fact that, uh, that innovation has to be done uh, uh, responsibly. Um, and a lot of innovation that we see, there's, a na there's almost like a natural self-selection uh, of people that approach us or we approach because uh, they're, uh, they're doing innovative things in a way that doesn't harm consumers. So we're, I don't think there's a, it's a binary choice. I think you can actually accomplish, uh, you can accomplish all of it. It's just a tug of war. It depends on where, uh, where in the spectrum you want to fall. But uh, innovation can be done very responsibly. Thank you. I yield back. Thank you. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. The chair now recognizes.